Hi, this is Tim of the 1916 Company. Welcome and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email us tmasso at the 1916company.com for purchase, pricing, and availability questions regarding this watch. So today we're discussing a watch that was launched in 2022, as you see it right here, but the example in my hand was sold in 2024. So this is the Jugere Le Cult Polaris Date Boutique Edition, and it's the follow-up to the previous Polaris Date, part of a series of modern Polaris watches launched back in 2018. All of them trace their aesthetic lineage back to the 1968 Polaris E859 diving alarm. So now that we know the entire history and heritage of the Polaris model, let's talk about the one in hand. 42 millimeters in diameter in stainless steel. The Polaris Date Boutique measures 13.9 millimeters thick and from lug tip to lug tip, 48.5 millimeters with a 21 millimeter spacing between the lugs. So you've seen other versions with blue and black dials. This one was only available through Chagere Le Coult factory stores and to this day, 2004, it continues to be so. It's neither oversized nor undersized. I'd say it's a full-sized watch. Keep in mind that the 1968 original was huge for its day at 42 millimeters in diameter. Now the lug profile in the case design of this is definitely more modern and embodies a lot of refinements not seen in the historic Polaris or even the 2008 a tribute to Polaris. This is very much a modern take on the Polaris in the same sense that a Porsche 992 is a modern take on the Porsche 911. And it's an easy watch to wear if your wrist is 16 centimeters circumference or larger. Now the strap is integrated so you can see it's got a full conforming profile that traces the downward arc of the lugs and the curve of the case. As a result, it is pinned against the case band, so there's a little bit of stiffness here. I can't pull it straight down, and so that's why I say you probably want to wear this watch on a 16 centimeter circumference wrist or larger. Just based on the lug to lug, you might think 15, but with the strap, it's going to be 16. Now, there are some advantages. It's a nicely textured strap. It's beautifully keyed to the dial color. You can see it features pull tab spring bars, so you can pop the strap off the case without a tool, and then using the quick release system built into the buckle, you just push this button here, the friction fit double deployment class pops off the strap. So you can remove the strap from the case without tools and also the buckle from the strap without tools for quick and easy strap swapping. And you can see how the buckle features both polish and satin. And so does the case. It's not quite as hard edged and anachronistic as the 1968 original, though you can see some elements like the stepped out lugs and the squared off ends do pay homage to the late 60s. Uh, we have a combination of polish and satin with the bevels expanding as they move toward the tip of the lugs, a very small stepped and conical bezel, and you can see it's almost invisible from the front as this watch is almost all plexiglass. Now it is plexiglass, but it has a dramatically boxed and cambered look that is designed to evoke the 1960s original and its plexiglass crystal, but this is very much sapphire. We have two crowns. The original would have had three because the original was an alarm, but like the original, this one features an internal rotating dive bezel, which you can quickly line up with the minute or hour hand to act as a point of reference. And I'll turn the lights off so you can see how this watch is loomed, and you can agree it is quite well loomed with all three hands luminescent, so you know whether your watch is running in the dark. And you can see how I can move that bezel index and set my dive time so I can time the interval from the beginning of the dive. The watch features 200 meter water resistance and whereas the original would have had a complex case back that was actually hollow and featured a resonator, this one not being an alarm, you can see the caliber inside. We'll talk a little bit more about it later, but you can see confirmed right here, 200 meters water resistant. The dial features a number of different patterns. We have uh, smooth and slick lacquering, we have sunray finishing, we have grained finishing, and we have opaline. So quite a bit going on on this dial. What you can see is that there's several different tones of olive green fading almost completely to black. We have indices numerals designed to evoke the original, and we have a center disc that's a nod to the alarm setting system of the 1960s 
predecessor, but this, of course, doesn't feature alarms, so it's just a gradient lacquered disc at the center that has a wonderful glossy aesthetic to it. This feels like a very expensive watch just on aesthetics alone, and it lives up to the legend of Giger Le Coult. This looks like something that should have a Giger Le Coult logo. And how about modesty and branding right there? JLC making the logo smaller when everyone else is doing the opposite. Now, it does have a little bit of a faux Tina look, which I usually don't love, but as a warm contrast, the green. I actually think it would seem a little bit harsh and mismatched if this weren't somewhat off-white. And I think the cream or eggshell tone of this loom is far removed from the cloyingly orange Fotini you see some places. This is a nice complementary color, and then we have just a few accents of genuine orange lacquer for contrast. The watch does include both a hacking seconds function, and should you wish to set the date, a very crisp quick set mechanism. Flip it all over. You can see we've got a tungsten rotor that's unidirectional rotating on ceramic bearings, unidirectional and ceramic making for maximized winding efficiency. This is caliber 899AB, and what's interesting is the last few years, Chichere Le Coult has stepped up its once subpar 38 to 40 hour power reserves to 70 hours, which is what you get right here. It's a four hertz beat rate. It pivots on 32 joules. You can see it is free sprung for precise setting and then durability against shock. The screws are genuinely fire blued, so while most of the execution here is mechanically applied, the blued screws give it a nice nostalgic touch. Now the watch does feature a large disparity between movement size and case size, and you can see that there's a rather sizable spacer ring, so a little bit of a trick of the eye to disguise that disparity, but I don't really mind, because this is a highly regarded timekeeper that is both very accurate and very tough, and it is a manufactured caliber now with 70 hours of reserve, so considering you can't wear them upside down, I find that to be perfectly acceptable. This is a good-looking watch that's gone through the master 1,000 hours control. Originating in the early 90s, it was one of the first in-house tests to go beyond the COSC, so it's a 41.6-day test that involves six-position chronometric testing of the fully assembled watch, as well as testing of winding efficiency, power reserve, and water resistance, plus overall durability. So so the Master 1000 Hours Control is an impressive pedigree that comes part and parcel to this watch. Reach out to Team Also at the 1916company.com for purchase and pricing details.